What's going on? Hi. Okay. Um, so I'm going to talk about Blue Cat today. Who's heard of Blue Cat? Before today? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Um, so this is a, a project inspired by NetCat. So everyone knows NetCat. Right? So hopefully this will be an equivalent in reputation someday to what NetCat is. My turn. Right? So that's talk about what we're going to be talking about. Okay, so what's significant with NetCat, right? What, is it, what are we really talking about? All right, we're talking about sockets. All right, but not these sockets, right? We're talking about sockets. Wait, wait, no, not those sockets. <laughs> these sockets. No, 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 no. No, no, So I was looking for pictures of sockets and I found this one. Um, and it's a lot like uh, interposition, right? Like that's, you guys, do you guys remember these? I recently found out that in the old days you actually like plugged your devices in, your light sockets to start when, when before it was before we had wall jets. So this is an early innovation. Okay. So one thing that people do on the internet, right, is look at pictures of cats doing things, right? <laughs> so what can this be really be reduced to, right? When you play a cat video, right? We're talking about streams. So every like data source is gonna be reduced to some stream. Right? Um, theoretically this is you can turn everything that ever exists on computers into a stream of zeros and ones, right, in some fashion, right? And they're awesome. That's like a, a, an amazing abstraction, right? both like in practice and theoretically. Um, so to achieve the, this cat business, right, we'll, uh, we'll take some video stream and we'll, well, we'll take some video file and we'll stream it to some application, right, that's going to uh, run. So we, some applications access files differently, but for the most part, let's just think about things where you can turn stuff into streams, uh, like videos, and, uh, and run them with some video play, right? So, when you're doing it locally, you, you, it's just a straight, a straight shot, right? I mean, there's a lot of stuff in between, but it's pretty much, there's not a lot of complication. Uh, when you do it over the internet, uh, you can, it adds a little bit of abstraction but this is this is kind of solved with netcat, right? You can just take the socket, which encapsulates a stream, and just shove it over uh, a netcat socket. So, um, with this tool, BlueCat, we can do the same thing really easily with um, with Bluetooth using BlueCat. So each side is using BlueCat, and then kind of bridge the Bluetooth divide um, while doing something like a script, right? So I mean, you can do all this stuff programmatically, but Coding with Bluetooth is a real pain. Like, uh, who's written a Bluetooth application? Nobody. Okay. Uh, so now you can just write a script and achieve this wireless coolness, whatever. This wireless. If you want to manage something wirelessly, it's easy. You don't have to like learn a Bluetooth stack and then make sure everything works and debug all this stuff. Uh, so one one big piece in this is uh, is how the stack, how this, how this program's kind of laid out, which I'll go over uh, in a minute. But it's it's really designed to work on everything, so you can kind of use it. So, so I've gotten this to run on a, a Raspberry Pi, and then a Chromebook with Ubuntu, and a Mac. I haven't tried Windows, it probably works on Windows. Uh, all the software that I'm using supports Windows, but I just I haven't tried it. Um, so it should run on like, pretty much every platform that, that people think of, like Symbian cell phones even support this stuff. But you never really have a command line access to that. But um, this library that I'm using underneath, uh, to code this whole thing uh, supports like everything. Um, all right, so we can typically kind of use uh, a stream uh, with this kind of method in a, in a script, right? So you cat some file that's going to give you some stream, right? And you can just direct that stream anywhere, right? If you cat a big movie, uh, it's going to look horrendous on the console, right? Um, but you can pipe it things, pipe it some other place, like to a file, right? Or um, directly to VLC, right? Let's say we don't have this internet divide here, right? You can just cat this thing into VLC, telling it to read from standard in, and just can play the video. So uh, we can all, we can kind of bridge the gap over the internet one way, um, and then we also want to have a equivalent method with Bluetooth, right? So how does this look like with netcat, right? So we um, cat something. So think of this as it's like between these spots, right? Um, so we netcat to some machine name on some port. 
and then the thing that we're going to was listening on some port in the stream exits, right? Um, So, um, screenshots out of order. So with, with BlueCat, um, we uh, specify some URL and then a monk here, uh, or whatever, you just call it URI or whatever. Anything. So it's it's a protocol, MAC address, and channel, right? And that's gonna that's gonna go to BlueCat listening on some of these things. So kind of mimics the way you'd use NetCat for these things, right? Um, some problems with like available channels, like if someone's hogging a channel. Um, you can't, like, by default, it will, uh, like, when you when you start listening, you say, I want to listen on channel 4, it'll just listen on channel 5 if 4 is already in use, and it'll, like, it just does this automatically. Um, but there are ways to, to do that. So it's kind of this similar scheme, similar use cases to NetCat, so the learning curve is just identical to the core right now. All right, so let's go to a printlet. So if you run it, you get a nice text cat, uh, and then it's going to list all the things that you can do, so I'll, let me go over these things. Um, one, one other kind of component that, that NetCat is missing, right, and, and NMAP fills that gap, right, is just to look at what's, what ports are open on something, right? So you guys have all seen this output. Um, NMAP running, and we have a port number, protocol, um, and it's open, and there's some identifier to say what it is, right? Um, so there are two ports open on this thing. Now, um, for for BlueCat, it's kind of like a two-tier system of discovery. Because um, it's easy to just connect to things, but it's way more useful if you know what can be connected to. So that's why this stuff's built in. So the first step is just scanning for devices around you. So here we have three devices uh, that this thing found. All right, I did that using a, like the service discovery protocol for Bluetooth. But the command line for this, you just did BlueCat devices. And it's going to search around you for all the devices that are in your proximity. Right? So, it's the same stuff that you'll see in the Bluetooth connection managers, depending on how open uh, your laptop is, right? So we, this will display uh, anything that's that's listed as visible, right? So uh, it's going to show you a timestamp, right? Um, this is actually some old output. So now now it shows a timestamp and then the Mac and the name. Uh, then we have whether we're connected and whether the connection is encrypted, right? So well, so trusted is going to be if you're paired. Right. Um, so to, one one big stem from this whole one big uh, angle of this talk is it's not there's no really big there's no real big problem with Bluetooth. It's really just how you can use it better. Uh, unless you're paired with something, you really don't have a security problem. That's not that's not what this talks uh, about. But once you're paired, then you know the kind of chains are taken off, and, and this is a it's a wild west between two devices. Which you're paired. So if you pair with your headphones, um, maybe I can. You'll understand what I mean in detail in a second. Uh, when you pair with your headphones, your headphones can read your contact list. So that's not a really good thing, unless you unless your operating system has, unless like Android or whatever these one of these things prevents you from reading that contact list. But it usually sec like asks you again. It says this Bluetooth device is trying to contact this. Uh, it's trying to read your contact list. Do you want to allow this? Right. Uh, so it's gotten pretty secure. I haven't found any flaws on that level. But anyway, okay. So we we can see three devices here. Right? We see their names, as you see them in the, the managers there. Um, right? We can go on farther uh, to now look at the services as well as the devices, right? So here we want to look at the three devices that we were just um, looking at. Uh, we can just easily do this with BlueCat services, right? It's going to say all the services available around me, right? Same thing with devices. So for each element, it's going to say searching for services on uh, this Nexus 7. Uh, we have a timestamp. Uh, device name, uh, the service name, so it's going to give you a description. So like which one looks like someone's playing around, right? You can see like Hello World, someone's probably writing a test application. There's probably some flaws in how they uh, implemented that, right? Um, so if you scan iPhones, it's funny, you can see that they have uh, like random apps. I've scared a lot of iPhone users because they don't know, they don't think that like they're broadcasting a Bluetooth access point, but some of these apps do that, so it's kind of funny. Um, but you still need a pair, so it's not really a security issue. And then you get the um, protocol string uh, listed at the end. Right? So this is what you use to connect, so I'll show that in a second. Um, but we have a similar format. I have a whole slide for that. Okay. And then we see that similarly for each device. Uh, so you can actually see what they're, what they're broadcasting that they have listed. Right? All right. 
Uh, so for stuff that you want to discover even even more, right? So if, um, if it's not like broadcasted uh, by the device itself, uh, you can just try a connection and try, like you know in effect scan it, right? So we can uh, try to make a connection on the first 30 channels that are available in Bluetooth uh, for a specific Mac. Uh, so even if it's not visible, if you have the Mac, you can scan. Right? So if it's trying to hide itself, if you use something like uh, Ubertooth, right, you can discover the Mac addresses of these Bluetooth devices flying through the network. Right? You can grab one of those Macs and then scan it with this try all the RF components. Right? Uh, and these, this, these aren't just RF components, these are the channels in general. Um, some of them are RF com ports, so this is going to be, these are three RF com ports in a row, and then you have, I don't know if I have listed here, some, some of them show up and they'll say, oh, it's, it's a OBEX port, right, with which this doesn't handle yet. Um, but you, you get to kind of probe the machine on this level without it actually thinking that it's visible to anybody. Um, okay. And that's just done by Blue Cat Scan and then some Mac. Right. All right. So, the Bluetooth URI monkey, right? So this is this thing that kind of gets used to uh, connect to Bluetooth devices, and whenever you're kind of talking about a service, you'll, you'll be dealing with one of these, right? So the only one that BlueCat supports is this Bluetooth serial port protocol, also called, called RFCOM, right? Uh, there are some other ones. This L2 cap, uh, I don't know. I don't know how you even use that in a command line utility. Um, and then there's object exchange, so I don't know how to use that either. So the one we really care about to emulate NetCat. Uh, is this Bluetooth serial port protocol. And this takes care of all the sequencing and uh, uh, rate control and all the stuff that has to go on with the connection uh, between point A and point B. Uh, but that's easily said in this monkey restraint where you have this uh, connection protocol here. And then next to it, we have the MAC address. Right? So this is, this is not a real MAC address. I, 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 all the MAC addresses you'll see here have been a little, you know, changed a little bit, so they're not exactly the devices that I know. Um, so you don't really have IP addresses, because you don't need this like network layer. It's all about proximity, like who's around you. Um, and But they follow the same convention as regular MAC addresses, so you can look up the hardware manufacturer just as you would with an Ethernet MAC address. Um, so, I have a slide for that? No, I have one in a second. Um, so, you know, the first six will give you a manufacturer, right? Um, Isn't it true that they're unique also in the address space? Uh, no. Yeah. So they should theoretically be. But uh, these cheap Bluetooth devices will have the same Mac. Um, and, and like this, the manufacturers, like, well, the resellers like say this when you order from like some website. They're like, well, these will probably all have the same Mac. We don't, we, no, no guarantee, right? So you shouldn't buy a bunch expecting them to each communicate, right? But if you buy one little USB dongle from Amazon and then you use your phone and your laptop, they'll most likely be separate, right? But if you buy the same devices, the manufacturer can use the same Mac. Um, so they don't have to be unique. And if they're the same, then you won't have to be unique, right? Um, right, so cool. Um, and then at the end you have a channel number, right? So there's a bunch of kind of uh, well-known channels that I didn't, I didn't document, they're just kind of repetitive. I'm still kind of scanning and building a database of all these things. Um, which is, you'll see the output uh, of BlueCat looks like it's a CSV file that's meant to be imported into a database. It's because it's designed that way. So if you think about the other angle of this is, uh, and it also runs on a Raspberry Pi. So all these things, should, you can kind of stitch them together to throw a Raspberry Pi somewhere with a Bluetooth dongle, plug it into a wall out and scan for months, and then you know can kind of monitor people with Bluetooth devices or whatever. So that's the only really problem with Bluetooth is that um, everyone can see. I think someone mentioned that earlier today with cars that have Bluetooth tire sensors, right? It's the same thing, but we're walking around with these um, beacons all the time, right? Um, okay. So let's look at some devices. So let's say we scan. Uh, this, was, this was the first thing that I actually found that worked like unexpected. Like I discovered something interesting. It was with uh, this printer that's down the hall from my office. So I scanned uh, and I got this result. Uh, we got a timestamp, a Mac, and a name. And then some other information about the device. But um, first, we can go look up the first part of this Mac and we find that it's microleak communications. So it's not where the, you know, Ethernet might say HP um, on, this, on this printer. 
uh, this, there seems to be no correlation between the Bluetooth dongle or the Bluetooth chip that they use and the manufacturer, right? So you can't really tie it together. Like if you, if you scan a bunch of devices, you can say, oh, those are all Apple devices, right? It's, it's kind of useful, actionable information. Uh, you really can't draw any correlations unless Microlink is the only is only used by HP. So I haven't seen any correlations like that. Um, so that's not very useful. All right, so let's scan this. Let's look at the services on this thing. Right? So we blue catify this printer, right? Uh, or we throw blue cat at it. Okay. Um, so we get some results back. Um, the name again, and then we have four services going on. Uh, and then you can see the protocol. So one of them is the, we can actually work with, right? It's the Bluetooth serial port protocol. It actually says serial port, right? So what happens when we connect to it? So the way you connect to it, right, to the serial port, because it's a BTSPP, is we do blue cat and then dash URL, right? And then you pass in whatever's at the side of your scan results, right? And you can just do this with each service. Um, and you can just see what happens, which is usually what I do. Um, now when you do this, like most phones, they're going to get pairing requests. Okay, most, most things are, are, they will refuse to establish an, un, an insecure connection, right? Uh, which is by design, it's a good feature. But a lot of devices also don't, like this printer, so you don't need to pair with this printer. That makes it a lot more fun. Um, so, if we do blue cat dash v for Rubos, right? And then we pass the URL that we just had, right? And then it's going to spit back, Rubos is going to tell us when we're connected, right? And then I type something like, Dear sir, your serial port is showing. And we, we use Blue Cat to talk to this printer, right? It'll actually print out the plain text that we type in this thing. So if you, who's done port 9100 on a laser jet printer or like some jet track thing before? 9100? Okay, a few hands. So that's, that's that inspired me to start playing around with this. And I ended up printing a lot of paper uh, on this guy's printer. So the, the next thing I tried, so the 9100 thing is, is these HP jet track printers will accept PostScript, or, yeah, PostScript and PCL, and you can send, you can like convert a PDF, PDF to PS, and it'll generate a PostScript file, and then you can just cat that to port 9100, and it'll print it. So I was like, well, it's an HP printer, it should work, right? Um, so I printed a PostScript file uh, to this printer, and it did not print the post. It, it did not print what I thought it was going to print. It printed what I sent it in text. <laughs> Uh, so it happened to be a professor's printer, um, and he was like, who is printing on my printer? He like, walked down the hall, he's like, I can tell, I know, uh, I can tell who's printing to my printer, and he came right to my door. <laughs> he was like, uh, and I was like, you don't understand, I just made this really cool thing. Uh, so yeah, it was fun. So it ended up printing on stationery. <laughs> okay, so um, now... So that was fun. That was uh, that was explored something. He kind of wrote a driver, uh, and he had no idea. He was like, "Yes, yeah, so you installed the thing from HP to do that." And I was like, "No, no, no. I just sent characters to the socket that was listening." Right? Um, okay. So look at the next target. Okay. So when I first made this thing, I, every person that I came in contact with I was like, "Let me scan your phone. Turn your Bluetooth on. I want to see what's going on with your phone." Uh, and most phones. Are secure. Like iPhones, you can find some cool stuff with like, they have like iApp wireless access port or something. That's the funnest. It freaks everyone out because they think they're they're sharing all their information, right? Um, but really, nothing interesting on those. Um, but this was an old phone. I found an old phone, so I scanned it, um, and this is the this is the model of this phone. So I scanned it. We Bluetoothed it. Right? We we blue catted it. Right? I need a catchphrase. So if you think of a good catchphrase during this talk. Like we have Netcat is a Swiss Army knife of, uh, of, of whatever. The Swiss Army knife. The network Swiss Army knife, right? Uh, and then NCAT has a, uh, NMAP has a, uh, has a terrible name. It's like free network. This can't be good. But if you think of one for BlueCat, um, let me know. So I think BlueCatified, maybe? Okay. So we search for <laughs> services on this, on this map, right? And it's a, uh, Alcatel, whatever, one touch. So we get some services back. We have three or four Bluetooth SPPs. So I kept connecting to a bunch of them. Uh, and then I connected to the serial port, I believe it was. Uh, yeah, so channel 11. Channel, channel 11, right? So we eventually 
that's really the only thing that's varying between all these these commit these things. Um, so these are all rep repeated, or repetitive. So when you save these all to a gigantic set of files, like I have, you can just grep for certain things and you get you can do statistics, uh, which I don't have any graph today. Uh, so I'm, I apologize for that, but uh, it would be it would make it for another talk. Um, so we connect Lucat URL channel 11, uh, and then I found the, I was like. I seem to be able to connect, and it does stuff, right, when I connect, it gives me like error messages and stuff. Um, so I was like, there's something, there's something more going on with this phone than all the other devices I saw. Uh, so I started, I started just typing random things. Um, I think I pressed, eight, I did AT once, and I got a weird error, and I was like, okay, there's something going on with AT. So I started looking up, uh, and I, who's ever heard of the AT commands? Yeah, okay, so, so tell other people about it, because, uh, they, they still use it everywhere, right? So this is like before um, my time, not to make you guys feel old. Um, so I, I started looking, and like, I was so excited, I think I have a page of links with AT commands on it. But it was kind of hard to find all the uh, all the AT commands. I kept Googling, and like, there was no right thing to say, like, mess around with someone's phone using AT commands. Like, it was, I didn't know what to Google. So um, yeah, so you start doing this, and you get results back. So I, I did AT plus CGMI, right? And I got this CGMI, and I got the manufacturer, right? Um, MM, was, there was the model, right? Uh, and then I got the whole string with some other stuff. Yeah, you can see the date on that thing. Um, was that long ago? Okay. Um, 